Hey everybody, welcome to Crossover Attack for August 27th. Almost here, well, probably August 28th from here in this. Uh, the year's flying by, too damn fast. Uh, this is Hunter Davenport here. Hello, hi, I'm here. And I'm Eric Freshly. Uh, lots to talk about this week. It's, uh, you know, it's actually, it's fewer stories, but the ones that are here are pretty damn big. Yeah, there's some cool stuff this week. Yeah. Um, and let's jump in with what happened today, uh, not as far as the news, but, uh, the Splatoon 3 Splatfest world premiere, cause they can't just call it a beta, I guess. I, yeah, I don't, I don't understand it either, just, you know, call um, it what it is. Yeah, well, there's a lot about this game I don't understand. Um, so, right. my history with Splatoon, I have, I bought Splatoon, I bought Splatoon 2 each time. I love the style of these games so much. Some of the best music in games, period. Uh, art style is fantastic. I love how b- just bizarre the concept is and all this. And and I want to love the game so damn much. It's like the number one series of games that I wish I liked, but I just don't. Um, the flow of it from you know swimming in the swimming in the ink to reload and popping out has just never clicked with me. Uh, the range of the weapons always feels super uh, limited. Uh, the and I, I was trying to think of why uh, this is, but I always get I can never find enemies like um, you know they are their hair is the same color as the ink of their team, right? And a lot of times I just like I don't I don't know I, I just can't find them in their own ink, <laughs> um, and that's frustrating. So I always feel yeah. like I'm just getting killed out of nowhere. I don't know, man. Uh, Splatoon just has never clicked with me, and I really wish it did, and that bums me out. Have you? Uh, I w- you know, go ahead. It, it's one of those games that I feel like if you're into other multiplayer games, and just not just this one, it's gonna come off as lesser to you. Yeah. Because it's not. It is not Overwatch. That is for no. sure. No, no, it's not. Uh, and um, yeah, and the the, uh, the no, I do. You know, I've said a million times I like horde modes and PVE stuff more than than uh, than PvP. There is a horde mode in this; it's not in this beta, so uh, you know that may be my jam. And this time, unlike last time, you can play it whenever you want. You're not on their fucking stupid set yeah, schedule. Yeah, that was. I, I I didn't really care for that mode, but oh, that I, I don't me, understand why they did that. That made me furious. I made a, one of the first videos ever on my YouTube channel was just about how pissed off I was about that. Uh, but you know, this thing you can play it at all times. But I still don't know if it's going to be worth you know buying just for that. Um, so I probably won't. Um, I was going to say maybe I'll get it on sale, but then I remembered, hey, Nintendo sales don't, they don't sales do don't do that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm probably just going to be smart this time and uh, not buy it in hopes that I'll like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but that still bumps me out. I wish they just sold the soundtrack. I would love that. Yeah. No, that'd be... I'd buy it on vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, I, whatever form they put it out on. Yeah, you know, Nintendo should be doing that for all their franchises. I, I don't know why yeah. they don't. I would have... I would spend so much money on Legend of Zelda vinyls. Yeah. Like, even just digital. Put it on iTunes, put it on vinyl, put it on everything. I, it's insane. Uh, I've been buying a lot. It's funny. I have uh, I bought a lot of game vinyls like in the past year or so. And I still have not bought a turntable, so now they're just sitting here with nothing to do. But I mean, hey, they, they look cool displayed. So. They do, but uh, I wanted to get a turntable at some point. I also don't know where I'll put it in here. Uh, I don't know, maybe... Well, actually, well, whatever. I'm not using this table very much. <laughs> I guess I can figure out my interior decorating later. Um, Cult of the Lamb is kind of blowing up for an indie game. It's it's uh, it is you know especially like about a week ago it was uh, it was everywhere. Yeah, it is. I played a lot of it uh, last week, and I really love this game. Honestly, like this is it. It's like I I have very very taste in indie game. It takes a lot for one to hook me. Yeah. Uh, this one got into me, like, got its hooks in me very badly. Uh, it, it just feels good to control. All the, all this, like, management stuff is really fun. Uh, the, the tone is amazing. It's a really, really special game that I, I wish more people would play. It's it, so good. It looks really cool. Um, it kind of, 
if some, I find it hard to believe that if you're listening to this show, you don't know what it is. But just in case, uh, tell us what what is the game. So it's like it's a roguelike that has like a, a Animal Crossing kind of like city management type thing, or you collect. You're essentially starting a cult. You're the last living lamb, and you got to fight old gods in order to do so. You need a cult, and you <laughs> seems like followers. the best way to do it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey. It went in doubt. Start a cult. Yeah. That's my. I've always said that. Uh, just it's just so good. The gameplay loop is so much fun. Uh, you can name your followers. So I have a bunch of like <laughs> randomly named people just running around my town, and you can sacrifice them if they piss you off. It's just a really good game. Yeah. Um, I've kind of heard that the uh, and you tell me if you concur. Uh, the the city building aspect, not even city, but I guess camp building, whatever the hell, um, is the main attraction, and the combat aspect is not so great. Uh, yeah, it's the combat's very repetitive. It's not Hades level quality, but it's like it is. It's serviceable. Uh, yeah. The weapons aren't very that varied, and it's, it's just like the, the, what you're going through this for is the cult. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, and, and, like, the wacky, like, kind of whole story of it is interesting because it is it is very dark and it has a cutesy kind of art style. And you don't see this a whole lot. It feels like, uh, I don't know if I remember Happy Tree Friends back in the day. Like, it gives me that vibe a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to jump into it. Which, where are you playing tonight? I'm playing on PC. Okay, that's probably, I think, Steam Deck is where I would play it, too. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a great Steam Deck game, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, everything about it uh, that I've heard from you and uh, others just seem like it's something right up my alley, so I do need to get into it. Um, I uh, jumped into Kirby Stream Buffet, uh, and I'm pretty disappointed, to be honest with you. Oh. I know. Um, <laughs> now, That's it, not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's only 15 bucks, so it's hard to be too heartbroken about it, but uh, it is just kind of it doesn't feel great to control so this is a a multiplayer kirby game um that is it's a it's a racing game but it's really more like fall guys than anything else um because it is a lot of like there's four it it gives you four back-to-back kind of mini games um the i think two of them if if i remember right because this is now like two weeks ago are kind of rolling around on a track, and then they're broken up by two others that are more like knock guys off platforms. But they, they'll throw different forms of each of those to mix it up. Um, and uh, yeah, it just it doesn't feel really great to control, um, which I guess is a little bit by design because you are supposed to be you're gathering uh, strawberries as you go, uh, and you get kind of big and out of control by the end of it. Um, so it is more like. It's not a super competitive thing. It's more like a Mario Party style. Hey, mm-hmm. like, hey, let's just get goofy with friends and have a good time. Which, you know, you can do that, and that's fine. Um, but I, I don't know. I didn't really feel like playing much more than three or four matches. Uh, then I was kind of done. Also, the lag was fucking awful. I bet. Oh honestly. my god, this I haven't experienced lag like this like since probably the 360 generation. It felt terrible. That that is a shame. Yeah, it really is. You can uh, I I got a video up of me streaming it. Uh, same thing with Splatoon actually, um, and you can see me just get furious at it uh, at some points. And uh, yeah, and then it does just feel you know similar to Mario Party that kind of the last round just. Uh, you can go from first to last, and it just feels almost kind of random oh, it's, how it happens. It's got the it's got the bullshit factor. Yeah, it has the total bullshit factor. Um, but it's cute, and there's a million things to unlock in it. I don't think any of them are like, like a lot of it is like hey, the little picture you will start on as your kind of st- as your you know starting platform. It's like oh, okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. But I didn't really get my toes tapped, and doesn't really incentivize me to want to keep playing. For sure so yeah a little bummed out by that uh i had you know it was fun for an hour or so and like i said only 15 bucks and maybe it's more fun if you got kids or something um you can only play two player locally four player online okay all right yeah yeah it was a bummer 
it's a bit disappointing when a Kirby game's bad. Yeah. Like, it always hurts my soul a little bit. I'm like, ah. Oh. Well, luckily we got maybe the greatest Kirby game of all time a couple months True. ago. True. And I haven't we beat did. it yet. I feel like that's the monkey's paw with this game. Is like, we're going to give you Kirby in the front lands, but yeah. Dream Buffet a couple weeks right. later. <laughs> and last year was uh, Kirby the Fighters, right? Kirby the Fighters I 2, so. I guess. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. that was great either. I don't, I don't... Honestly, I do not remember that coming out. <laughs> well... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. It wasn't a big release, obviously. It was, you know, a small digital one, and it is kind of basically, you know, baby's first Smash Brothers, which you know, not a bad wow. thing, but not what I need. You know, I got Smash yeah. Brothers, and now I got multiverses, so uh, they. But you know, that's aimed at a younger, younger demographic. Uh, not at a young, younger demographic, I guess, is a Two Point Campus. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing Two Point Campus uh... on Game Pass. On Game Pass on Xbox uh, and PC for that matter, it I I have such complex feelings about this game because I love Two Point Hospital, but this one is kind of like a little too complex in a really? lot of ways. Yeah, because like I can't. There's there's points where you have to build like different like classes for your for your courses. Okay, and it doesn't seem to always work. Uh, for some reason, all my students would be in one class. And I can't. I, I looked at all the graphs, everything there, and I can't figure out why. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Uh, the, the the tone and the humor still there. I really like that. Um, and I did. I couldn't get through sandbox like because my favorite thing in these games is always sandbox mode. That's that's my go to. And I couldn't do it immediately, so that was kind of a bummer for me. Oh, could you do that in uh, in, in hospital? I'm fairly certain I could. Okay. Uh, I might be wrong. I don't know. It's been, it, I, it's been so long since I played Hospital that sure. I don't remember. But yeah, this one's all right. I, I, I'm not as into it as was Hospital. Um, it, it's still fun, but uh, I, if, I, if I was going to pick a two-point game to play, I would go back to Hospital. Ah, that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, these are, if people don't know, the spiritual successor to Theme Hospital mm-hmm. uh, from back in the day, which uh, I believe were games that were really really big in europe and uh you know not that they were small here either but um yeah that's a bummer to hear all these games so far except for cult of the lamb but kind of a bummer <laughs> yeah it, it's just like not not it hasn't been a really fun two weeks for games i mean uh, there's the big one the big one <laughs> that oh came boy out yeah we, and we both have not played no yeah i was uh we're talking about saints row if you don't know and i was excited yeah. to play that before it came out and then those reviews I was too and those reviews hit and it just fucking sounds uh like uh not fun at all so uh i uh, skipped that one and I don't think uh, maybe, you know, in a couple months if they patch it up. But it sounds like even if it's running well, it's just not that much fun. It's not, I don't know. Like, I was listening to Gersman talk about it. And yeah, I'm me like, too. This is just not. I mean, I'm probably going to try it if it ever comes to Game Pass, but right. I'm not spending 60 bucks on this game. Yeah. Or 70 or whatever they want me to pay for it. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's why we're not talking about Saints Row. Um, that's right. <laughs> also, Midnight Fight Express came out on Game Pass. I did. I wanted to play it. I didn't make time. Maybe I'll play it after we record, and then I'll talk about it next time. But, uh, yeah, didn't happen. Um, what I did play was Morty in Multiverses. Um, he's complicated. Way more than I thought. I, I heard. I haven't, I haven't picked up Multiverses because I haven't had time. But, okay. like, I saw some stuff, and I was like, this is I can't believe they did this with Morty and yeah. all characters. You would think, um, or at least I thought for some reason they were gonna make Rick complicated, which it seems like he is, and then Morty would be the more simple one. So that <laughs> hey, if you're a fan of Rick or Morty, you could pick up the complex character or the simple one. But no, they both seem like they're gonna be pretty damn complex. Um, he's got he can throw grenades. And then his neutral attack will be a laser blaster that'll automatically home in on the grenades, and it can ricochet and shit. Don't get me wrong, he can do some fucking really, really super cool stuff. Um, he's just not what I expected at all, um, and I, he's not probably not for me. Um, let's see what else he can do. He's got he's got a a teleporter that, but it seems like Rick's gonna have one too. But his works a little differently, where kind of his warp when he comes out of the teleport it'll stay there and your allies can sh- if your allies shoot projectiles through it they'll make them go re- it'll buff the projectiles 
Oh, that's cool. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff. His neutral attacks are all... He's classified as a bruiser, but he really seems like he should be a mage because his neutral attacks are all ranged. He's got a, mm. he's got a blaster that'll just be... If it's not on cooldown, it'll shoot crazy snakes that'll go forward or upwards, depending on which direction you shoot it, for a set amount of time and then split off into two. Uh, but then when it is on cooldown, it'll home in on your own grenades. He also passes... When he passes an ally, he will give them a grenade that they can just throw. Um, God, let me think. I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, oh, he has this spawn point thing where he like kind of lays down a spawn point and then he can go fuck around do whatever and a couple seconds later he will zip back to his spawn points heal himself and uh he leaves a grenade at wherever he last left off he could also he has like this earth column of rock that can pop up and if you hit one of your own grenades with it the grenades will split into two and keep in mind everything i say about grenades you can also use the laser blaster to ricochet off all the grenades so like he can do some of the, the coolest shit I've seen in this game, but it's not easy. And there's so many cooldowns with him. Almost all of, even his basic move is on a cooldown. Uh, yeah, because if any of that didn't have a cooldown, he'd be the most broken character. Yeah, yeah, no shit. But um, he'd be crazy. <laughs> I mean, he already is kind of crazy, but it's just so much to keep track of. That's it's nuts. It really is. That game is, like... I, I know... I'm just, and we, we've talked about this before, just how different it is than Smash. Um, but it's just... I could never imagine a character this complex being, like, Sakurai even... Not that he no. can't do it, um, but just that he, they would never want something like that in their game. Like they, It just wouldn't make sense in Smash yeah. either. Like it's, it... They want pick up and play. Um, you know, not, not to say pick up and master, but they want you to be able to kind of just... Yeah, you, it, can, you, can, you can bullshit with any character in Smash. Sure. Sure. And, yeah, the multiverse is not that at all. Which, no. you know, just like League of Legends, which all these developers came from. So that kind of makes sense. Um, I am always thinking, every time they do something like this, I'm thinking, like, is this going to alienate, like, their audience? But then I remember, hey, MOBAs are super complicated, and how big are they? So it probably won't. Um, that's it, I guess, for all the games we've been playing. Uh, so let's move on to the news, shall we? Absolutely. Uh, the PS5 is finally getting a price cut. Oh, wait, no, I read that wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was the this was the easiest setup for a slam dunk I've ever yeah. seen a company do. What's the opposite of a price cut again? Uh, uh, a price pr increase. Oh, damn. Um, so, yeah, the price is going up on PS5 in pretty much every country except for America. Um, this USA, is... USA. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> This is crazy. I don't. I can't think of a time this has ever really happened. Um, I did see some, like Twitter response and stuff that say in Canada the PS4 went up uh, by a little bit. Um, the PS4 games also went up in Canada a while back. Yeah. Oh yeah, and the, and, and the games this generation PS5 jumped up to seventy bucks uh, mm -hmm. also. But yeah, as far as consoles go, it's nuts. Um, let me bring up Jim Ryan's statement here. Because, you know, we got to hear from Jimbo. Yeah, number one Jim Ryan fans, us yes. and Jeff Grubb. Yes. Um, <laughs> the global economic environment is a challenge that many of you around the world are no doubt experiencing. Not a great lead, by the way. To say, hey, yeah, no. you're all having trouble paying your bills and shit. Uh, we're seeing high global inflation rates as well as adverse currency trends impacting consumers and creating pressure on many industries. Based on these challenging economic conditions, SIEs made a difficult decision to increase the recommended retail price of the PS5 in retail mark in select markets across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America, as well as Canada. There will be no price increase in the U.S. Uh, and then he lists all the prices. While this price increase is a necessity given the current economic environment and its impact on SIE's business, our top priority continues to be approving the PS5 supply situation so as many players as possible can experience everything that PS5 offers and what's still to come. Now, he's not lying about any of that. It's all true, but your Sony fucking eat it. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean... I mean they, they're the the I think they're above Microsoft in sales. Like, oh, absolutely. They don't really need to, have, like anything. No, it, it's that they can get away with it, and that's you know 
why they're not doing it in the U.S. because they can't get away with it here. Uh, no. Because number one, they have much more competition here from Xbox. They, the Xbox is not very big in in most of Europe and mm-hmm. and then Asia and everything. And that's why they're going to get away with it there. And also just because we are louder and shit, we'll get on Twitter and yeah. bitch about it a lot more. We will bully them. Mm-hmm. And they don't want uh, the bad press from us. They don't. Uh, and then. The, f- the funniest part is following all this news. Microsoft, Nintendo being like, we're yeah. not doing that. <laughs> no. Boy, and I was thinking, you know, and this is not the best way to run your business. And plus, they couldn't do it on a dime, I guess. But if Microsoft came out and said, hey, we're going to cut, you know, even just 10% or whatever. Or probably just like even five less. bucks off. Yeah. I would have I loved that. Oh, that would have been nuts. Um, and, yeah, but and I don't expect them to do that. But they, they might just get an increase uh, just based on this anyway without doing a damn thing. I would have been running sales and promotions and be like, if you, if you buy two Xbox at a discounted price. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, I and uh, just to reiterate, yes, he's right that, hey, the price of packaging has gone up, of silicone has gone up, of uh, storage has gone up, of, uh, of everything. Everything across the board has gone up. I know we've all felt it. Um, it's been yeah. it's pretty bad. So, uh, yeah. Sucks. He's not wrong but god damn it this is just it feels so and the, god the, the statement is so tone deaf it's so dumb uh, this dude he, he he's a chronic foot and mouth person. yeah yeah he he can't talk to people he's it's, it's bad he's not a human i think no, i think he's a robot honestly oh man um so yeah i uh i don't even you know like i don't know um, yeah, bad news. Uh, and I, but, but the thing is, I don't think it's going to matter. Like I, no. as much as I wish people would kind of, uh, send them a message on this, they're going to sell every PS5 still. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like even if, if Microsoft did the same thing, it'd be the same kind of like response be like, we're still going to buy the consoles. Like, it, yeah, but maybe not in these regions. Cause like, no, no, no yeah. not in those regions, but like, if like, it just, it, it's so stupid. Like, if, <laughs> it's so dumb. They're getting away, they're doing it because they can get away with it, is the bottom yeah. line. Um, yeah, kind of the the old uh, traditional way this has been is, hey, you lose money on the console and you make it up on the uh, on software. And, yeah, you know, about a year ago they said they weren't actually losing money on the PS5. I don't think that's the case anymore just because every, the prices have raised so much that they are now currently losing money on the ps5 but still hey that's that's how the business has always worked yeah um yeah i don't like this don't like it one bit and um i don't know uh amazon is buying ea but oh no not really (laughs) um so there was oh damn it i didn't write down the source oh well it was usa today uh and it came from a i think a dutch website before that uh, and then relayed through USA Today. They printed a story two days ago saying, hey, Amazon is going to buy Electronic Arts, and they're announcing it today. And then it only lasted about eh, two hours or so, and then CNBC came out and said, we've looked into it, and no, this isn't happening, at least not right now. Um, and so, yeah, there was some egg on that, that guy's face who reported it. And he is kind of sort of backtracked off it but not completely like you said like oh you know it's possible i got fooled by one of my sources uh, or i got a bad source but also I'm... cnbc just said hey it's not happening today that doesn't mean it's not happening ever i don't know i, I also think that it no duh amazon has interest in ea yeah <laughs> like absolutely. that's just obvious <laughs> like well they're talking to everybody like even in that that cnbc video um nbc said uh, hey, our parent company was talking to EA like about a year ago, and uh, it didn't move forward. Those part those talks fell apart, but but they did happen. It almost the deal almost got signed. And yeah, I'm sure they've talked to Amazon. I'm sure they've talked to Disney. I'm sure they've talked to. Them. I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked if like we found out like two years later that like they've talked to like Universal and like yeah. all these other companies. Like it's it, it, it's it's like as much as we shit on EA. They're a very profitable company that people like. Absolutely. Like in that sense. In that sense. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I'm gonna bet that Amazon 
most likely does not buy them. But if it did happen, I wouldn't be totally shocked. I wouldn't either. Um, so th this story, I think, could still be true. Just the timing was off on it. Uh, you know, they, they have their uh, their Luma service, which I don't think is doing that well right now. But they could. They have it for now. Yeah. <laughs> until it's dead. Yeah. Um, they, they do seem less... I, I think Luma will outlive Stadia. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, once that Lord of the Rings show fails... Oh, oh that's true. <laughs> Actually, I forgot about that. <laughs> Luna will die. Yeah, I did forget about that show, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they could use the boost. Um, you know, they also just want the money coming in. Uh, they do. That, the, that, you know, they get from FIFA Ultimate Team. Um, you know, they could tie in EA Play to Amazon Prime then at that point, and do things with Twitch uh, streamers to have them play more EA games. I don't know. There's a lot of uh, synergy that could happen there. So. I can't wait yeah. for the EA The Boys game. Yeah. You know... I can't wait for that. There, there, I, I, when this uh, news... In, like, the two-hour space when we thought this was happening, there was some stuff that, like, I really wish EA would do as far as do the Mass Effect multiplayer as its own... Mm -hmm free-to-play live service they thing. could they and they'd love that yeah. honestly um do star wars battlefront uh again as you know free-to-play live service cross-play the whole deal um because I mean, battlefront 2 by the end you know it had obviously that rough start let's just say to put it uh gently that, that game's fine I yeah think that game's fine. by the end of it i think it got fucking awesome and i think yeah. uh, you know if they made that uh and not just make that old version but Try to yeah. use that as a starting point to make a new one. Uh, make yeah. and this time free to play live service, all that. Um, you know they could do a good hearts and mind thing, hearts and minds move by doing Titanfall three. Um, there's a lot of things that I would like EA to be doing that they're not doing. They're not, so they're not going to do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. But be, hey, not, at least they're making the Black Panther game. Yeah, right? yeah. So not that I'm necessarily pro Amazon, but I would just I would love if if there was a shake up at EA. Uh, yeah. I'd, It'd be cool to see. Yeah. Uh, but one thing EA is shaking up with is they are apparently doing a partner game with Koei Tecmo of some kind. This um, is interesting. Now, it is. Now, uh, you know, the first thing you might jump to is a MOBA, or not a MOBA, uh, a uh, Muso based on an EA IP. But apparently, no, this is a new IP. Yeah. I, I, I it, it, that doesn't shock me. Uh, Koei Tecmo loves working with everybody. Like, that's just yeah. kind of there been their thing for a while. Uh, I'm interested in what this is, because this is, seems like something EA would not want to do, honestly. It, it seems out of their wheelhouse. Um, now, they have had, you know, big successes with some of their partner games, especially uh, It Takes Two. Yeah. Um, but Koei Tecmo, I, I, I don't see them necessarily making a game of that size. Like, I, I, I think of them as making slightly bigger like a, games than that like a mid-size kind of like hyrule warriors size thing maybe. yeah i don't know if it's gonna be like a muso type like you said but uh, you know whatever this thing is i'm interested to see it because I, I, I like koei tecmo games for the most part uh and sometimes ea makes a game or two that i want to play so <laughs> yeah not not so much recently but yeah uh, no. i mean i'm a huge mass effect guy um mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and apparently we're going to be hearing about this relatively soon. Um, there's a couple things out there that, like, Jeff Grubb has been saying uh, just in the past week. It sounds like he's heard more in the past week or so because he's saying more, like, he's moving up the timeline on this stuff. Like, uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, he kind of, on this show this week, he would said, Hey, I talked to some more people, and it sounds like you're going to be hearing about this really, really soon. So it yeah. seems like... Uh, I don't know, it seems like September is going to be a big news month, I guess is what I'm getting at. I think, because, like, the, July was a big news, June or July, around that time. That was, that was a big news month, and, like, we don't we didn't have EA, uh, E3 this year, so, yeah. you know, I, I think companies are kind of just like, all right, so we got to start thinking about 20, the 2024 and all that stuff, so. Yeah, I, I think in September we're probably due for a Nintendo Direct and probably a Sony State of Play also. Um Sony, with, you know, increasing the prices, I think they do want to kind of get some good news out there. Yeah. And that's I, I had heard, this is kind of off topic, and I didn't see this on the news docket, I heard from Tom Henderson that there might be a Sony event soon. 
Yeah. I, so, can, I can see that. Um, and Tom Anderson also, we can go ahead and skip down to that story. He also yeah. said uh, Discord voice chat seems like uh, it's going to be coming to PS, to PlayStation uh, very soon. Um, which yes. now it's already on Xbox. You know, we talked about that and that kind of the Frankenstein way you have to put it together. Um, but uh, that'll make uh, voice chat across platforms possible. I mean, it, it already is possible through the games a lot of times, but this will make it easier, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's the kind of thing that, yeah, they could announce at a state of play. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, it, it it's makes, been a while since we heard from them. Yeah, so. it has been. And it makes total sense where they just got some bad news out there that now they they need to erase that shit um i guess there's not much more to show with god of war but maybe maybe, i mean they'll have a launch trailer for sure i'll watch another trailer yeah sure (laughs) and you know they haven't officially announced returnal for pc yet even though we all know it's coming yeah that's that one's so obvious like uh i mean it's it's been leaking like hell and uh you know, Spider-Man Two at some point they got to talk a little bit more yeah, about. Yeah, that's so. like I think that's going to be holiday next year. Yeah, <laughs> likely. Maybe we'll see something will rain. I doubt it, but <laughs> yeah, probably too early for that. I think. <sighs> I'm, I'm so excited for that game, but I, like I know I'm not going to see it for a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's probably 2025. I would guess. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think we're overdue for Sony. We're overdue for Nintendo State of no, no, not Nintendo State of Play. Um. Nintendo uh, Direct, yeah. Yeah, because they have to announce those Zelda remasters, Metroid Prime 1 remaster, and... Uh, Spring games, I think. Yeah. That's and the only other thing I can think of. Advance Wars. Fucking drop it, please. I think it's. I think it, that's coming soon. That's, it better be. Uh, no, I, I guess can't wait for better those games. Be. Yeah, me too. Um, Jeff Keighley uh, did his song and dance. Uh, in Germany. They let him come to Germany still. Yeah, they let him into the country somehow. Weird. Um, he came out at uh, Gamescom opening night live and uh, did his thing for two fucking hours. Um, which I... Uh, it's just unfortunate timing for me because uh, I just... Cause my work schedule. Uh, I was very tired yeah. to this. But I you- thought it was a solid show overall yeah I, you know i don't expect at gamescom f- to have my mind blown uh, a lot of it is kind of e3's leftovers and sloppy seconds um and that's kind of what we got but there was some cool stuff here what, what do you think of the show overall uh i liked it, it i thought it was fine yeah. um it, it it seemed like a very uh like like how summer games Fest was focused more on games we've already kind of seen before and it did have other stuff that we haven't but this seemed more focused on hey this these are coming out soon and yeah. here here's new games that you haven't heard of yet and one we haven't heard from a decade yeah well let's start there uh, dead island 2 uh <sighs> at summer games fest they kind of teased it with that goat simulator trailer that's so weird did they know <laughs> Uh, I th- well, it, it has been kind of reported for the last year or so that Dead Island 2 was back in full development and seemed like it was actually going to happen. So I guess they did kind of know. Um, but, yeah, it switched studios like three times. and Yes, so it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't even know, actually. You go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to look up. I meant to do this. So early. I... The, I have what the studio that it's in now has actually done before. I have very little faith in Dead Island 2, and I, people get mad at me when I bring this up because like, there's three studios. It switched hands between. It's been a decade since we've seen it. Whatever this is is not what it was a decade ago when it was first announced for PS4. Uh, I think people need to temper their expectations a little bit. But but did you know? That this studio, Dan Buster, the last game they made was Homefront the Revolution. So, oh, so you know. yeah. <sighs> you, guys, <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but Dead Island, the original, I only played, I think they put out a, like a demo or a beta or something. And I, that was kind of all I played of it. Um, I, and that was, I love the first Dead Island. I do. That game's great. Now, that was Techland, who then went on to make Dying yeah. Light. Um, 
Okay, well then I guess that uh, Chaos is not what I was going to say. I was going to say the first one wasn't great. But <laughs> well, I like the first one because I, I played it with my little brother. That's mostly why I like Well, it so yeah, much, and that's so. what I was actually going to say, kind of, what I was going to say about this. Um, this is, I don't think this is a game you should bother with if you're going to play it alone, in, in no. my opinion. No. I think. No. But I, but I bet you get in there with, you know, one buddy, two, or three. I bet you'll have a good time. Yeah, it's, you'll have fun. It's not going to be the best game you've played, um, for sure. But yeah. yeah, as far as basically having a chat room to just mess around with your buddies in and, and not take it seriously, I bet you it'll be fine for that. You'll have fun with three friends bonking the zombies in the head with yeah. packs. It'll be great. Uh, yep. Yeah, so that was Dead Island 2. That's uh, coming out February. Um, high on life. Um, I did not like the boss fight that they showed, to be honest with you. Uh, but but they did um, put out more footage after that, which I haven't, I haven't watched yet. It's on my YouTube watch later list. Um, this might end up being a case, at least from the, what it looks like to me now, of, hey, the levels are fun, the boss fights aren't. But, but I don't know. What do you think? Uh, as, a, as a Rick and Morty hater. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I don't. I'm actually excited for this game because it's less Rick and Morty and more of like an Adult Swim game. If like if you like listen to the voice cast, like there's a lot of Adult Swim people in that. I I think that's really cool. Uh, I don't know. It, it it'll probably be a fun time just because it's Justin Roiland and friends dicking around. Yeah. So I'll bend it for that. But as like as like a really solid first person shooter, I'm not expecting this to be at all. Yeah, uh, I I don't think it's it's going to be. Uh, but I don't know. You, and like you said, uh, I, I hope it's short. Actually, is kind of what I'm getting. I at. do too. I, Me too, because I can't handle eight hours of Justin Roiland. I don't. Think. Yeah, it that's seems like, like my a bit cat. much. <laughs> uh, Atlas Falling was announced. This was the team that had made. Uh, oh shit! I, I wanted to write this down and double check, but off the top of my head, I believe this is the team that made the Surge games. Um, and this looked like uh, a big emphasis on co-op, I think, because there's two characters mm-hmm. in there. Um, I don't know that for sure, but it did kind of look like that. And it seemed like the weapons that you're using are all made of sand. You seem like some kind of sand wizard or whatever, and you can kind of make weapons out of sand and boom, boom, boom. Um, well, it was mostly a CG trailer, but the end did have some a quick montage of clips gameplay. I think it looks neat, and uh, hey, new IP. There was a lot of new uh, IP. Yeah. There was a lot of new IP across this whole show. Yeah, I mean, I like I, I like the way this game looks. Uh, the, the guy has a cool mask, and I always like a cool mask. Yeah. So. Um, I, I'll, I'll check this out. The thing about I'm assuming uh, because the Surge was a Soulsborne game, um, I'm assuming this will be too. Uh, and, I hope it's not. Yeah, well, the thing about those is I've always said, hey, I would try, I'd be more willing to try those out if you could do them co-op, like, from the start without jumping through a lot of hoops. Like, From Software likes to make their co-op so obtuse shit, and I just don't even bother. And uh, Neo sounds like it does it a little simpler, but that's on PlayStation, and my co-op... It's also way harder, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really want to like to play Neo, but it's on PlayStation, which I have, but my co-op partner doesn't, so we just yeah. we don't. Um, so this one might be the first time that I really give a Soulsborne a real honest try, assuming it is it's one. Not a Soulsborne. I could be wrong, yeah. I mean, yeah, it could totally not be, but I'm just just based on the surge, just, I think so. But what is a Soulsborne for sure is Lies of P. Uh, yes, and I ain't lying one... like Pinocchio. This one, I like this one. So the news about this uh, that they I mean, we've seen this before, but this was the the most we've seen of it, uh, mm-hmm. the biggest look. But the news that they dropped is that this is going to be Game Pass Day One. Yep, which is good. Yeah. Uh, What'd you like about it's it? Good. Uh, it's got the coolest like concept I've seen in a game in a while. Uh, the idea of like taking Pinocchio and like turning it on its head into like a souls like a Bloodborne thing. Yeah. It's really smart. Uh, and, you know, I like, I really like Bloodborne. <laughs> and I'd like to play more about Bloodborne. <laughs> so. This seems like the uh, closest thing you're going to get to Bloodborne in a while. Um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, Where the Winds Meet uh, was another new IP that took me by surprise. Uh, 
This is a, actually, I can't remember if this was developed in China or not, but the game takes place in China for sure. Um, and this seemed really cool. It was a fast character action game um, where your char your character's doing a lot of mystical things like running on the wind and stuff like that. Um, super fast paced, super stylish. What do you think? Uh, I think it looks cool. Uh, is this based on a book? I don't know. Because I think I've I can't heard read. of a book called Where the Wind Meets. <laughs> I can't either. So. But I've had one read to me once. Uh, I, I don't know. This looks cool, though. I do. I, I like character action, so like, yep. I'm excited for more. Yeah, I'm excited for more, and I'm excited for new IP. Um, so that's one to keep your eye on for sure. Um, you know, think about a lot, and I, I'm sorry if I'm mistaken here about where it's developed, but We've been seeing a lot of trailers come out of China that look fucking amazing, but also, like, where, where are the games? <laughs> yeah, like, they're just seeing trailers for the most part. Yeah, and even ones that are gameplay, like that, uh, was it Black Myth? Is that what the one's called? Oh, yeah, the Wukong one? Yeah. Um, like, they've shown gameplay, but I don't know. Nah. I, just, I just get a feeling a lot of times that they're just... Hey, these games are never going to actually come out. Like, amazing trailers uh, and amazing looking games, but I don't know. Um, I'd love to play them. Yeah, put them out. I'll I hope so. I, 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 don't, I don't know how, 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 quite how to describe what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it almost just feels like... So, the game development scene in China is very new, um, mm. and it almost feels like... The, the, the they're still learning how to close on a game. They can have great ideas and mm. and really they they can start like a fucking rocket, but they're they're they don't know how to close yet. They, they seem also to to understand the tech very well because yes. like a lot of those games are gorgeous looking. Yeah, like Narok. I don't really care for Narco Blade Point, but that game looks great. Yeah, I need to. They they put that campaign in it now, um, so I, I did want to try that out. Um, you can play as Bruce Lee in that game. So oh wow, that's also another point. Jeez. Uh, Sonic Frontiers had a trailer, and it looked the best that game has looked so far. I think. Sonic. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to be tricked into playing. I know. <laughs> I know. That was when I was watching the thing, and like you could. You, I did a live reaction to this whole show. You could see me say like. This looks fun, but I, you know, who can say? Um, I, I'm just waiting for reviews, honestly. Yeah, because I, I really like when I say that. I don't want to seem like I'm down on Sonic because I do like Sonic. Yeah. Uh, I just want a good Sonic game. Right. Um, That's all I want. And kind of, I think the last one was Sonic Generations, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, Sonic Mania too. Oh, uh, right. Oh, yes, of course. Um. But, yeah, and this did show me... And I think the reason I thought this was the best the game looked is it did have uh, glimpses of Sonic Generations there as far as mm -hmm. switching from 2D to 3D. And Yeah, I don't know. Um, th I, I th uh, Like I said, everyone's down on this game, and this is the most promising thing we've seen, but who can say? Uh, I, and they, I'm scared. And, and they are <laughs> reiterating over and over again that they will not delay this game, so we'll find out soon. Sure. Uh, Movie Now 2 got announced, and uh, it's going to have... Whoop, whoops. It's going to have online, unlike the last one. So that's good news for me, because I didn't get... How are you going to play that online? Uh, I, They put online into Overcooked 2. Yeah, but Moving Out, I mean, isn't that like a supposed to be like a super zen experience? No, I don't think or so. Are you thinking of Unpacking? Unpacking's what I think. Uh, yeah, moving, moving Out is moving moving out, out different. Yeah, Moving Out is more like a... Uh, um, what's the name of that game? Gang Beast kind of thing. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Except you're, you know, you're moving things out of an apartment and you can throw shit through windows and walls and just destroy the yes. place. Yeah. No, that's exactly what I wanted. Yes. Um, yeah, and the first one seemed to be really fun, but it was local only, so I didn't get much... Uh, I didn't get to play out of it. I didn't cool. get much playtime out of it, so... Adding online is exciting to me. Uh, the Lords of the Fallen uh, is a sequel to Lords of the Fallen, but they're not oh. they're not calling it a two or anything like that. And it's funny, um, the guys who made the original Lords of the Fallen 
they are now, I think they're now on that Atlas Falling game that we just talked about a minute ago, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a, Man. a different team. Have you? I didn't play Lords of the Fallen. I did. Tell me about it. That game, that game sucks. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I can't believe this got a sequel. I'm gonna be, I don't know why they're doing this, why, why anyone in the right mind okayed this. Well, that's not what I wanted to hear. Yeah, that that first game's bad. It's a bad Souls like. <laughs> and yeah, I, it's not good. I was right about that. The guys that made the original Lords of the Fallen was Deck Thirteen. They are now the ones making Atlas Falling, that sand game oh. we talked about. So that's disappointing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they made Lords of the Fallen and the Surge games, and and this is a different team now. Uh, I'm not sure who's developing this. Um, yeah, uh, f- a funny trailer, though, on this one, because they used Danzig's mother, uh, which was bizarre. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> uh, Dune Awakening is a survival MMO based on Dune. I mean, uh, you know, this this disappoints me. Why? Because I really want a single-player Dune game, no. and they won't give it to me. No, they won't. Well, there's the, the strategy one. Sure, but that's not what I want. No. <laughs> I still don't watch Dune. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Everywhere was announced by the Benz. Uh, Le- the Benz. Leslie Benzy has emerged from his slumber and announced <laughs> Everywhere. If you don't know Leslie Benzy, he was a uh, high up guy at Rockstar who really he kind of he kind of closed on Grand Theft Auto Five and Red Dead Redemption Two uh, when those games were in trouble. Rockstar brought him in to just like kind of hey. You are our crisis management guy to, they, to, to pull these through the finish line. Uh, they needed the bends. Yes, they needed the bends. And then there was a problem where I, I think it was they were supposed to pay him a big bonus and they didn't. So he mm-hmm. left and he sued them and it was messy. And I don't even know if that is concluded yet or not. Um, but uh, now he's making everywhere, which looks like GTA Online in a different setting to me. Like they're shooting, they're driving, there's... So, this is the biggest... This game has the most red flags I've ever seen in the game. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Because all the phrasing around it is like, it's a metaverse. Like, Oh, yeah. It's totally and, a fucking metaverse. And I'm like... But... Really? GTA Online is a metaverse, right? It is. And I've also heard that like all the gameplay we showed, that was like to attract investors. So oh. this game is so far out. That oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to be playing this anytime soon. And now, and I, the biggest red flag, and I don't know even know if you heard about this yet, they have some job listings on their website for oh. blockchain specialists. Yep. Now, yeah, now, so. now, to be fair, Benz did kind of respond to this and said, he put out a weird statement about where he said, this game is developed in Unreal Engine, not on the blockchain, which... What 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 does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean exactly? Um, and no, he and he did, like, so a lot of times these companies will hire blockchain uh, enthusiasts just to look into it, and then decide we're not going to do it uh, because hey, it's not worth it at this point. It's just and it's PR poison yeah. at this point too. <laughs> I suspect that's what's going to happen with this game. Is hey, they're looking into it, but they're probably not going to do it. Um, I I'm sure that. Crypto.com and all these companies have contacted him about this game. Yeah, I, I'm very positive. So I have more hope for this than it sounds like you do. <laughs> I'm just I'm I don't trust it, but I could be wrong. Well, Who you knows? know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't trust it now either. But I I want to see. I'm I'm not writing it off yet. I guess is what I'm getting. I want to see it succeed. I want it yeah. to be good. Yeah. But I am cowering in a corner. <laughs> Uh, that's it for the games, but there were still two more announcements that were not Ooh, games. One, uh, one I'm really excited about. I'm going to save that one for the last. <laughs> um, the DualSense Edge was announced, which is PlayStation's Pro Control, or Elite Controller, yeah. um, their version of it. I I really like this thing. It sounds cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, the fact that you can save profiles on it so you don't have to like go through and change all your settings every time you play a game. Right. Pretty neat. Did it say how many profiles there are? I don't think they gave an exact I number. Um, I hope it's a little more customizable, though. Like, because the best thing about the Elite is, like, the Xbox Design Lab. 
Wait, so, well, you can't do Design Lab with the Elite Controller, unfortunately. Oh, you can't? Oh, no. I thought you could. No, okay. you can only do Design Lab. That's why, like, I've never made a Design Lab controller, because I have an Elite, Dude. and I, I just don't use the basic Xbox controller. Like, why would I if I have the Elite? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get pick one of these up and an Elite, so I'm definitely excited. Yeah. Um, it's going to be costly, though. And that, actually, that's kind of the other thing I didn't mention with the... Uh, when we talk about the PS5 price increase, it made me think, how much is PSVR 2 going to be? If there's yeah, that's going to be four hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I oh, I think, I think four hundred would be lucky. I think it might be more. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. Um, and and also now this Dual Sense Edge, that's probably going to be two hundred, right? Like the Elite's one eighty yeah. already. Mm. Um. Anyway, but the thing you are excited about, I believe, is. Mr. Kojima came out there yeah. and didn't talk about a game. No. <laughs> Talked about a podcast. Here's the thing. Uh-huh. I don't know if anyone has ever read Kojima's blogs. <laughs> Which we no. all have, of course. I, I have. I have. <laughs> so I know this is going to be the most long-winded and bullshit podcast of all time. Except I for ours. For I, I really think he's going to push the, the times on these things. <laughs> he is going... They're going to be four-hour game, like, podcasts every week, and I'm going to love it. Uh, and if he overtakes this podcast, I'll be, I'll be disappointed, but also I'll respect him for it. <laughs> So, this is Spotify exclusive. Um, mm-hmm. He did say they're putting an English version and a Japanese version. Um, yes. I think he said he's going to have guests, right? So, I mean... I think so. I really... I, I can't wait for all... Because the guests are all going to be insane. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, you can expect Mads Mikkelsen. You can expect Norman Reedus. Yep. Um, Keeley is actually going to be a regular on the show to do a news segment. So, I guess... Is he oh, going to... Okay. Is he going to talk about, like fucking kojima's gonna comment on the ps5 price increase and shit and stuff like that. i sure hope so that'll be weird like he, uh, he just talks about like the price of some something in like of some european country yeah. in, for four hours but but how much can he say like he can't piss off he don't want to piss off sony or no, piss off microsoft so <sighs> i think what it'll be is he's gonna he's gonna steer clear of that stuff and it'll be all like third party stuff yeah because I, I don't think Keeley also wants to piss off Sony. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's, I think it's going to be very although, light news. Although at this point, Keeley is, like, getting more powerful than all of them. So maybe he, is, he won't care. So he can do whatever he wants yeah. at this point. Uh, yeah. So that when, when does that go up? He did say. An hour uh, Tuesdays. Every Tuesday. But, but uh, when does it start? It's pretty soon, right? I think it's next week. He oh, has shit. an episode up right now. Oh, no kidding? Okay, well. Mm, yeah, it's just a prologue. It's like six minutes. Sure. But... All right. Uh, and the same day as Gamescom opening night live, a couple hours before, was the Destiny 2 showcase. Uh, yeah. Did you watch this? I did not, but I saw the pirate skins, and I'm like, I'm back in. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, this showcase was fucking awesome. Uh, I did watch it, and I did do a live react. So... It was multifaceted. Uh, kind of the biggest thing was Lightfall, which is their mm. their next big expansion, which will come in February. Uh, it looks awesome. Yeah, it does look awesome. Yeah, and they did show the tr- the shorter. This was like a half hour long show, and the you know the Lightfall trailer itself, you know, two minutes long or whatever. They did show this also at the Gamescom opening night live, so you might have seen that. But um, they're introducing so the the villain of this is going to be Callus, who's coming back. Um, He's now kind of seems to be working for the witness uh, who is, you know, the embodiment of the darkness, um, kind of the new big bad, basically. And Cal's working for him. And then presumably we will fight the witness in the next expansion, which is called the final shape. Um, we're going to, is it Neptune? I want to say Ooh. Uh, we're going to Neptune. There's a city there um, that has been hidden from us until now. Uh, so and this, this is an environment that looks like cyberpunk. It's fucking. Cr- it's it, yeah. It looks I, like nothing in Destiny. That's for sure. Very. I'll, I'm a very big fan of when games are like, let's just try a different art style for like this one section. Yeah. So, 
And they kind of have their own protectors called the Cloud Striders, which are sort of like their version of Guardians, but they're going to be on our side, apparently. Um, so that's neat. <laughs> but we are fighting Kalos' forces, who are, you know, the Cabal, but they look like they're modified uh, of some kind. So I don't know how that will play out in gameplay as far as... Because Destiny does could use another enemy faction we have been fighting the same enemies for quite a while now um but they are adding a group called the tormentors which seem like they're going to be kind of mini bosses um almost like the hive guardians were for the witch queen i would guess um they are uh you know the witnesses uh bolstering Kalos's forces with them uh but as far as gameplay goes we're getting a new darkness subclass called strand um which seems like it is kind of a telekinetic and, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Psychic abilities. Uh, the oh, it's a, it's a it's like like um, what is his name? Isn't there a character in Destiny that can do that already? I, I don't think so. Imagining things. I mean, I'm, there have been characters who have done. Like crazy psychic things. Yeah, they're, they're or been, am I imagining things. They're, they've been doing crazy psychic things, but uh, I think Strand is a little different. Um, it's mm -hmm. tough to nail down. Like, okay, so the solar subclass, obviously that's fire. Stasis, obviously that's ice. Strand is a little tougher to nail down exactly what it is. So, like when I even say telekinetic and psychic things, maybe I, that's not the best way to describe it. But it's tough to to nail down exactly what this is. I mean, solar is you throw hammers and things. Explode, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, the Titans get these big friggin' Wolverine claws for their super, uh, oh. Hunters get, like, a, a rope chain, they can do some scorpion bullshit, uh, and the Warlocks get, like, a more of, like, a projectile type thing, um, that can kind of make enemies. I'm playing Destiny again. Yeah, I know, oh, it tonight. looks, I, I, fuck, I... <laughs> Well, I mean, we'll get to it, because there's, there's a lot in this. I guess I'm going to try to shorten this up a little bit. Um, so, the new Strand subclass is the new Darkness subclass. Um, also, everyone's getting... Hunters, Warlocks, and Titans are getting a grappling hook now. Um, Ooh. I, so, I saw something. Not to get too off track. Yeah. Uh, they're getting rid of uh, Expansion Sun setting. Yes. So, that is huge. Yes, it is. Um, it seems like... And they weren't real specific about this, but it seems like the seasons will probably still be sunset. But that's fine. But yeah. the expansions will not. Uh, starting with uh, 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 Shadowkeep, um, okay. and I do wonder if long term they want to even go and bring back uh, Forsaken and the, and the Red War, the original. Uh, they should. Yeah, I think they would like to. They they said like. We're making progress on our engine, so it seems like, you know, the game can su support more stuff to it. It seems like it was just fucking falling apart with how many different parts were on the game, but uh, I think they're... It is a very expansive game. Yeah. Like, it's... I think they're building their foundation now to support the stuff a little better. Mm -hmm. So every, every class is going to get a grappling hook as part of Strand. Now, I'm a little unclear on... If you... All right, say you play through this campaign using... You say you don't want to use strand. Say you use solar uh, or stasis or whatever. Um, are you still going to be able to use the grappling hook? Because I would presume there's going to be parts of the platforming of the levels that requires it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, so then do you essentially have to use strand to play through this campaign? Or what? I think... I mean I, I, I think Beyond Light, you had to use stasis in parts of it, at least. So, I don't know. Big I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Um, so, that was Lightfall. And then they talked about this current season, which is Season of the Plunder, which is pirate-themed, like you mentioned. Yeah. It also features Arc 3.0, uh, which I... Maybe I'll jump in there, actually, right after we record and play. Because I have not done... I didn't do much of this last season, either. So, I have not much messed up much around with a solar 3.0 now there's arc 3.0 now i'm literally about to download it again <laughs> ah good man uh let me see and yeah so that's going on right now there's one more season after season of plunder to the, that will go into lightfall mm -hmm. um oh the biggest thing i got most excited about was they announced lfg is going to be in the game uh looking for groups so you'll be able to 
you know. Oh, that is yeah, like perfect. Yeah, you'll be able to raid and do dungeons and do all the other stuff that kind of didn't have matchmaking. Uh, you'll be able to find people easier. They, they've had it uh, for a little while on their mobile app, but now they're finally putting it in the game. Um, they're doing some other kind of quality of life changes as far as like putting all your mods for your armor all on one page. That will make it a lot easier to start organizing that shit. And also they're mm-hmm. going to have loadouts now. Um, so all that will be in with Lightfall. A lot of, a lot of just simple quality of life stuff. Um, yeah, I'm very, very excited. And then they ended with talking about yes, no sunsetting or no more expansion sunsetting. Good. Good. Um, they're also doing, they came to the Epic game store and they're doing some crossovers where there's now some Fortnite inspired armors in Destiny. Also, they put Destiny characters into Fortnite. I bought Zavala. They put up Zavala, Ikora, and the Exo Stranger into Fortnite. And no Cade 6, unfortunately. N- supposedly, it was going to be Cade 6. Or wait, no, that was a, never mind, that was a meme. I, saw, <laughs> I was going to say, wait, was that real? No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, no Cade 6. And then they also put some Fort, some Destiny stuff into Fall Guys as well. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so... And there was a lot more details if you go and watch the whole showcase. But Destiny is really goddamn good, and it looks like it's going to continue to be really goddamn good. Um, Can't wait still... to go back. What? Can't wait to go yeah. back. <laughs> I wanted... I, I've been teasing on this show forever that, hey, I got a big Destiny video that I want to do soon. And I wanted to do it before the showcase. I didn't. But some of the things I was going to talk about, especially LFG, they're doing anyway. Um, mm. So I will... Uh, I still want to get that out. Um, a little surprised that the new subclass was not Poison Theme, which is what most people expected. Hmm. But, yep. Yeah, anyway, that's Destiny. Whew. <laughs> I'm excited. Private Division and Weta. Now, so Weta, if you don't know, they are a movies special effects house. They do uh, mostly... Well, not even mostly, but they do a lot of different stuff. Uh, kind of where I became aware of them was Lord of the Rings stuff. Well, a couple of years ago, they had quietly announced they had started a game development branch in their studio. And now we know their first thing is going to be a Lord of the Rings game. Uh, which is not based on the movies, it's based on the literary works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and they're publishing it with Private Division, who is, you know... 2K's kind of indie label. Mm-hmm. What are you expecting here? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's kind of the fact that it's private division tells me it's probably not going to be a big AAA thing. I don't think it will. Yeah. Well, you have to remember they also before Microsoft bought Obsidian, they were published Outer Worlds. Yeah. They were going to. So no, they, I don't know what they, they did. Doing. They did? Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the okay. Outer Worlds is a private division game. Uh, now, Microsoft owns that IP, but they, they don't. They did not publish the first game. They will publish okay. the second one, obviously. Okay, uh, but yeah, I have no idea what to expect. Uh, hopefully, it's good. There's not a lot. I there's not a lot of good Lord of the Rings games, except for like maybe Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. <laughs> or like the PS2 games. So. Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, and it, it's going to be their first game, so I, I almost hope they don't, you know, overreach. Don't, yeah, <laughs> don't just do something simple. I don't think anyone will fault them for that. All right. Uh, even though they're, you know, a large company with a lot of money, uh, still not not experiencing games. Um, mm-hmm. But the Lord of the Rings news don't stop there. Uh, Embracer did what Embracer does and went on a shopping spree. You know, it's funny how they uh, they do these. They don't they, they don't announce them one at a time. They'll just you'll wake up one morning and there'll be like twenty fucking ac- acquisitions all at once. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. So they acquired uh, or will acquire. They announced they're in the process of acquiring uh, limited run games who make. Uh, Usually indie games, they will... I mean, they don't make them, I'm sorry, but they make physical versions of them, and they'll just put them out for a limited run. Um, And they like to package different goodies and stuff with them to try to make them special. Um, 
Tripwire Interactive, who makes Killing Floor and Man Eater. Yeah. And had a dumbass CEO like about a year ago. Came <laughs> yeah, then they, they fired him essentially. <laughs> yeah. Or something like I, something crazy happened where actually, they they had to make a statement and be like, "Yeah, we don't believe any of that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and actually, but now that I think about it. So I think they they did they did fire him from his job, but he was still on as like part of the board of directors. But now with this acquisition, maybe that board they don't they don't need the board anymore. Yeah, they have yeah. Racers. So I guess I didn't put that together until just now. But I guess this means he'll be gone, gone. Uh, I you know I'm I'm just speculating here. But uh, Tuxedo Labs, who makes Teardown, mm. uh, a secret acquisition. They had said Wait, they, they said we that one. That one makes me think it's something crazy. Well, they did say, like, hey, in this group, it'll be, like, the third or fourth biggest one. So it can't be a massive deal. It'll be something you won't expect, yeah. I think. Uh, they also opened a new kind of wing within Embracer to for retro games and collectibles, which will probably tie in the limited run, is my guess. I think that's cool. Yeah. I, I also think that's a cool thing that they should be doing. <laughs> and the big one is... They acquired the IP rights for Tolkien, uh, for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So now, Wed is going to make their game, and it looks, seems like Embracer is going to be making some Lord of the Rings games too. Give it, to, please give it to Crystal Dynamics, like a legless yeah, game by Crystal Dynamics. Come that's on. an interesting idea. Actually, I didn't write it down, but just yesterday they announced that uh, the acquisition of Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal is completed so it's complete yeah they, they, they're gonna have to change their name yeah i know i was thinking that too uh and i wonder even if idos probably will i mean idos probably won't i guess but square Enix idos i don't think we'll have to yeah um yeah so now what this does spell bad news for the tolkien embracer deal is gandalf in multiverses yeah um that stuff if you hadn't that's that's dead <laughs> uh, probably um I mean, they could still make the deal. So, I made a, a video of this. So you can go on Fresh Stream Games YouTube and uh, see kind of what I had to say about this. But if you don't know, Gandalf was in Lord of the Rings, uh, or he was in Multiverses. Uh, the data miners found him, and then kind of in the most recent build of the games, he seems to have disappeared, and people didn't know what's up. Um, you know, Embracer could make a deal with WB to do that but the problem is wb seems to be fighting against this acquisition they seem to say no 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 all right because embracer by the way they say hey we're not just gonna have game rights we're gonna have the movie rights and the tv well not tv um movie rights and something else i don't know whatever but and, and wb is saying no 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 we still have the movie rights because a like spider-man it works hey if you're still making movies you get to keep the rights and we are making an anime that counts we get to keep it and isn't Amazon making that? So, uh, I believe TV is separate if it's longer than six episodes. Uh, that's so I know. weird. I know. Who made this? Deal? I, this is like the Marvel deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, TV is a little different, um, but uh, that, uh, so fucking stupid. Um, so WB can't say we don't respect embracers ownership of this but also let's make a deal to make it to put gandalf in multiverses i, I, don't, I don't think yeah I, I don't get it i don't think that'll happen so um i think at least until i think there's going to be a legal fight here between wb and embracers see who really owns this fight, shit fight, fight. and i don't i wouldn't expect gandalf in multiverses until that concludes at least and then if, if wb wins hey they can just put him in if embracer wins then maybe they can go to the table and say let's make this deal and and uh, we'll put him in as a guest character but uh i wouldn't expect that anytime soon unfortunately me neither but still you're gonna get some uh lots of lord of the rings games apparently from yeah. weta and uh embracer now um I, I, I want to go back a little bit because now I'm kind of confusing myself here. Maybe the Weta game is based on the movie because our right, Embracers is based on the book. I don't know. What can, can Weta make this game if Embracer has it? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, me neither. Um, I'm sure they're gonna make it no matter what because they have the game rights at the end of the day. 
but but well, well, who does? Because now, if Weta's making a game and Embracer's making a game, who has the rights? I'm confused. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. I you know, I. There's gonna. I bet you there's gonna be some uh, some fights and some court battles. I can't wait. I can't wait yeah. for the the transcribes from these court yeah. battles where we learn weird things about Embracer Group. Oh, there's <laughs> it's a, gonna be great. Well, well, here's a weird thing about Embracer Group. Uh, as also, this was all part of kind of like in conjunction with some earnings calls and stuff that all that acquisition stuff happened. Um, and one other thing they said is one of their AAA games has changed development studios, which we. Well, when th when this news broke, we all assumed it's Night's Hill Republic remake, and then a couple yes. days later, Jason Schreier came out and said, "Yep, it's Night's Hill Republic remake," which we uh, kind of suspected to be the case before this, and they confirmed it that mm -hmm. Aspire was in over their heads, unfortunately. Uh, and I I don't want to trash them too much because I think they're no, I don't either because yeah. like they tried. Yeah, they least. tried. They're good at what they did, which is you know porting old games and and really gussying them up make them look good and they they reached for something bigger and it seemed like it didn't work out yeah and this it doesn't mean they can't try again i do. well i mean i hope so but i worry that embracer is gonna say no 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 go back in your lane do yeah, yeah. um go poor jazz jack rabbit or something <laughs> right so and now it looks like this is gonna go to sumo digital um who is i i heard i thought it was gonna be the metro guys Oh, I don't think so. They said, they said Eastern European. <clears throat> That's Sumo Digital, I believe. Well, Sumo Digital has many different locations across. Uh, the... But if it's Sumo Digital, I'm sure they'll do, do, fine, do, do fine. Yeah, yeah. They, I think a lot of people don't understand how big Sumo Digital is um, because mm -hmm. they do mostly. Well, or at least they did do mostly support work with other studios and helping them out. But they've started doing their own games too they did i think snake pass was like the first one which is a smaller game mm. but then they and that game's great yeah. i don't know if you ever played it but i did not but then they did world war z which i absolutely love and they that did, game's good yeah I, I, that's one of my favorite fucking like uh left for dead ripoff games um but they also did crackdown 3 so mm. well uh, it's crackdown 3 kind of went through a dead island situation where it changed hands a couple times too <laughs> And they did Sackboy, A Big Adventure. Uh, and I think they did Little Big Planet 3, even. Uh, they did Sackboy? Yeah. That's pretty cool, Yeah, actually. they did. They, so they do a lot of stuff. They, they, they're massive, and they have many different locations. Um, and, yeah, they're, uh, they're a force to be reckoned with. Um, so, yeah, I think they are on it. Uh, I... I uh, it makes me feel a little bit better for that remake. Yeah, me honestly. too. But also, it makes me feel like we're not going to be seeing it for a long fucking time. Sure. I... I assume that anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Disney and Marvel Games are doing a showcase uh, attached to D23. Uh, that's on mm -hmm. December 9th. Wait, is that right? Not December 9th, is it? Did I write Se that down? September. Or? Okay. No, it's September. Because it's, D23 is next month. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because I know I would love to do a live reaction to it, but I unfortunately will be out of town. Uh, Maybe they'll show the Black Panther game. Yeah, I think they could. Um they could show god i hope not but they could show kingdom hearts 4 um i don't think they will I, no it's too it's too early it's too early uh they could show more from jedi survivor uh yeah dreamlight valley i, I hope dreamlight valley gets like when does dreamlight valley drop it gets in early access next month i thought well be, before or after the ninth uh, after the night? I want to say it's okay. like the 20th, but I could be wrong. That, that sounds about right to me. Um, so they could show a little more from that. And also, I would like them to kind of lay out a roadmap about... Because it, since it is early access, and obviously even after it, it's 1.0. It, I think that's going to be I, a live service game. I lied. It's September 6th. Oh, okay, so it'll be out a couple days before that. So I, But I would like them to you know come out and say, hey, here are the next couple things we have planned for it. Yeah. Um, what else? Here's a chair you can buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of, like, mobile stuff, but, you know, also... Oh, Marvel Games, Midnight Suns, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, any else that I'm... I feel like I'm forgetting. I'm trying to think of other Marvel games that are coming out. The Sony stuff won't be there. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it'll be Spider-Man. That, that will not be there. Um, I, You know, who knows, man? Like, they've never done a showcase like this, no. so... Um, 
And it's going to be hosted by Blessing from Kind of Funny. Yeah. Uh, Blessing's cool. Go watch that. Yeah. I would like to watch it. I wish I could do a live react to it, but I'm out of time. Uh, we do know that Respawn is doing, besides Jedi Survivor, they got two more Star Wars games in the works. Um, yeah. That's, I, prob- I don't know how. Yeah. Well, one of them is out. It sounds like one of them, the strategy one, is former XCOM people. And they're, Which is cool. Yeah, uh, and and respawn is more of like advising on that one, but mm-hmm. they're involved. Uh, it's probably too early to show that, and I can't even remember what the third, what the other game is. Did they say? It's a first-person shooter. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, probably too early for either of those, and mm-hmm. any other Disney games like from General Disney. It's not Marvel or Star Wars. I can't you think. Make of a Wreck-It Ralph game. Yes. <laughs> you know what? They should just do like a Donkey Kong World. With Record Ralph and they should put it up. I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd pay exactly two dollars for it. Oh, they have a uh, free to play kart racer coming too. Yeah, the, I see John Drake talking about that on Twitter yeah. all the time. I would oh. like to see that, but John Drake blocked me. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that, was, that was years ago, and I don't even remember what I did. It was probably my fault. Whatever it was. Uh, he seems like he's got a, a trigger finger for the block. Yeah, button. I probably deserved it. I don't remember it, but whatever. It happened. Um. Avalanche Games, not the Harry Potter one, the uh, the Just Cause one, uh, who are now doing Contraband for Xbox. Which, by the way, I would like to see where the I haven't seen that game in a long ass time. Yeah, wait, oh, we missed one. What the Indiana Jones game could be there. Oh, could be. Well, oh, I doubt it, but it could shit. be. Shit, I, I did not think of that. You're right. It could be. But it seems too early, honestly, but. Well, I was thinking. So I think of machine games normally as making very violent shit, which I don't think they'd want to show at D twenty three. But they probably won't with Indiana Jones, right? I mean, for Indy, no. Yeah, I mean, they're not gonna go full Wolfenstein. Indiana Jones has violence in it, but it's always like. Yeah, it's not bad. It's nothing awful. Except the guy who got his fucking heart ripped out, but. Uh... And the guy who melts, and yeah. the lady who gets eaten by red ants. Well, when did that happen? And the Crystal Skull. Oh, I didn't see. It. I, I didn't. I wish I. I wish I could forget that movie. I never watched Crystal Skull. <laughs> You're. I. I envy you. Although I. I kind of want to see the red ant thing, but uh, maybe I'll just watch. It's, it's fucked. Maybe I'll just watch that on YouTube. Um, yeah, they could show Indiana Jones. Yeah, now you got me excited. But anyway, Avalanche yeah. Games, the Just Cause one, not the Harry Potter one. They revealed <sighs> that uh, around the time, I think it was around the time of Iron Man two. They were making an Iron Man game, and it got canceled, unfortunately. This one hurts my soul. I know. It does seem like they would have been a great studio for it. Um, and, yeah, you should watch on... It's on Min Max's channel uh, with two N's. M-I-N-N Max. Um, they were interviewing the guy, and he talked about it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it was going to be an open-world thing. and Could have been really cool. Soul. Hurts my soul. Yeah. NFL Blitz is back, kind of. Uh, yeah. Arcade One Up, who has also just put out a Marvel vs. Capcom two cabinet, or is about to. They do these kind it's of so cool. Yeah, they do these kind of arcade cabinets that are smaller scale than than full size, but you can put in your home and uh, be real neat. They are making an NFL Blitz one, um, and yeah, now it is going to be slightly censored. A little bit. Oh, yeah. I imagine so. Yeah. Uh, I believe they had said, like, 80%. I'm trying to... I got the article up now, and I'm <laughs> skimming through it. I think it said, like, 80% of the the hits, the, the late hits, are still yeah. going to be in there. But some of them are not. Uh, because Big, crunchy hits. That's all I care about. Yes. Now, the thing about it... Um, when you play NFL Blitz, to me... You do the late hits and stuff, you know, the first couple times. But then you're yeah. like, it's like fatalities in Mortal Kombat. It's like, you know, hey, which I was, which was also made by Midway. Like, this was fun. Like, this is a fun thing to see once. And then it's just like, all right, let's move on. Let's, let's get. Yeah, and then just, it's, it's still like, without, even without that, it's still a very good football yeah, game. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's, that's why you're there. Like, I. I don't know. I, I want to see the cr- the the late hits one time. And then it's like, all right, let's just let's play the fucking game. Yeah. Let's move along. <laughs> I'll do it just to do it, but I won't. I'm just, I'm there for NFL blitz, not maiming people. Yeah. 
Um, I, they have said they've gotten a lot of those uh, characters back. Uh, the, oh, the, the, okay. the classic, not not even characters, but players, I should say. Um, but not all of them. Uh, let's see, here it is. We're at 85 to 90% of the original roster. I wonder who said no. Yeah. I, w- I want to know. I wish they'd come up with a list. Well, there's a picture here of Deion Sanders. Ooh. Um, Deion Sanders said no? No, it seems like he said yes. Uh, th- th- this picture is him, like, Play in the cabinet, and here was was OJ, was OJ in that? I don't remember. Oh boy, because that could I, be a problem. I I think he was after this. Oh no no he what yeah no he was like the seventies. I I can never remember uh, time period for sports uh, people. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he was in. Uh, Dan okay. here's Dan Marino playing. Oh okay, so they, he's great in Mason and True. So yeah, so is this called? NFL, yeah, okay, this is NFL Blitz Legends, they're calling this. Anyway, okay. um, it, so it's going to have the original game in it, Blitz 99, and Blitz 2000. And it's going to support oh. It's going to support online multiplayer. I played a lot of Blitz 2000. That was the one I had. 49-way joystick, uh, which is good. I remember they used to put, some arcades would uh, take the Blitz machine and put in a cheaper joystick, and that always sucked. Yeah. No, you need that smooth, buttery yeah. joystick. Six hundred bucks for this thing. It's you know. Yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah, I know that. that's the thing. Like, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just they, le- illegally acquire. They make some incredible cabinets, but yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't have the room for them. First of all, uh, even though they, I'm just saying, uh, you can make, get a Raspberry Pi with NFL Blitz 2000 on it and build a cabinet around it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that's not the experience, man. Uh, yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> uh, the Winter Soldier is getting added to Avengers, so Avengers still ticking. And I guess now it's Embracers Avengers. I, I don't know. Really? Well, I'm, they have the rights? I mean, I guess they don't have the rights, but they own Crystal Dynamics. I guess I just don't know how this is going to work. Because, um, like, on Comic Club, I was in, like Frank told me the, that they got the rights to the Marvel stuff, and then I heard they don't got the rights to the Marvel stuff. It's so confusing. Well, they all right. So you're right, they don't. Um, but they 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 own Crystal Dynamics. Um, I guess Square is still the publisher of this. Is going to continue to be the publisher of the Avengers game, I presume, unless that, you know, for now, maybe that'll go out the mm-hmm. window later. But um, I would presume, at some point, if if Embracer wants Chris Dynamics to continue on this game, they would have to make a deal with Marvel, I guess. Otherwise, th- then they're going to say, fucking give it up and put all the Chris Dynamics on Tomb Raider or whatever the next thing is. Yeah. I, You know, is my assumption. Like, why would why would Embracer want Chris Dynamics to continue work on this game if they're not going to benefit from it? I mean, I, it's, it's still the hottest IP of all time, so yeah. might as well keep keep churning it out and, 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 and hopefully fix it and they also might want Eidos Montreal to make Guardians of the Galaxy sequel which in that case then they have to work with uh, yeah, work with the I mean, if this goes well yeah. I'm sure they'll allow that yeah. anyway Winter Soldier's coming to Avengers uh, relatively soon that game's still chugging along uh, they, have, they actually had some announced some pretty substantial updates to it with it so that you know, mm-hmm. so that game's uh, they did one of the things they mentioned. It's now it's on Game Pass and it's also on PS Plus now. And they did say like, hey, that has breathed some new life into it. It's still not the biggest thing, still not as big as they wanted it to be, but seems like it might not be as dead as once thought. It's it's definitely not. Yeah, it, it, I I love that game. I want it to succeed. Me too. So. Um, needs crossplay, but you know, I guess it does. until the Spider Man stuff. Hey, maybe if Embracer does kind of make a deal with Marvel and cut, if they can cut Square Enix out, then maybe that the Spider-Man deal between Square and Sony kind of becomes null and they can uh, put Spider-Man on every platform and then they can uh, uh, do crossplay, maybe. But anyway, that's all just uh, mm-hmm. daydreaming. Um, Nintendo has... They had a... Uh, some reports came out about how they were treating their contractors. Uh, surprise, surprise. It was not well. 
and they are now actively investigating it. It's basically the thing. Um, sure. I'm actually surprised they said anything at all. Uh, Nintendo usually doesn't make uh, comments on this kind of thing, but yeah, this seems like something that they kind of don't ever acknowledge. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, Doug Bowser didn't say, hey, we're going to look at it. Um, there is some pretty nasty stuff in here about... Uh, some pretty gross stuff. Yeah. They would... They would have these uh, perks for their employees that they wouldn't have to contractors, such as, you know, holiday parties was kind of the biggest thing. And so... In order to get into these holiday parties, we, the contractors would... The employees would start hitting on the contractors, uh, you know, and like for dates and stuff. And the contract, so the contractors would feel like they had to say yes and had to put up with this. Just not only to get into these holiday parties, but then they maybe someday could become full time employees, which was always, you know, every contractor there pretty much wanted to become a full time employee. And the pathway to that wasn't clear, so they would, you know, feel like they had to. Uh, uh, get in with these uh, full time employees and it was just a a bad situation there all around it's gross yeah like this industry that never shocks me yeah no. in terms of like how gross it can be yeah it uh, does uh, I should say and I guess in in all fairness all these reports are from a long long time ago like almost a decade um not I doubt it's a hundred percent better there now, but I probably a little better, right? <laughs> I mean, because I sure hope so. Yeah, it's like uh, I don't want anyone to have to like be in that situation. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So there's that. Yay, video games. Uh, Death Stranding got added to PC Game Pass. Yeah. Now this. Now more people can play it. This is great from a crazy news standpoint, um, but make no mistake, it's still a terrible game. Uh, uh, to you maybe. <laughs> Just trash. Uh, anyway, no, th this is crazy though. Uh, if you don't know, Death Stranding was not published by Sony on PC. Uh, it was published by Five Hundred Five Games. Which is why why this happened. Because if it was a Sony game, it definitely would not have. Um, yeah. And it feels like similar to the MLB The Show. Sony kind of got cut out a little bit. Because uh, Sony only publishes MLB The Show on PlayStation. They don't publish it on PC. They don't publish it on Xbox. And so Microsoft went to the MLB, who is the publisher, and said, let's make a deal. Well, in this case, they went to 505 Games and said, let's make a deal. And, uh, and Sony kind of, it, it's a, it's sort of a bad look for them that this, this stuff happens because if you're not in the weeds, you're not paying attention to, Hey, who's the publisher on which platform? And it's just like, why is this place exclusive on game pass? It's weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like this for obvious reasons, but also the amount of cope. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, Twitter that day. And maybe it still is, but... Well, I mean, sure. I, like, I mean now they probably all moved down to arguing about prices, but... Sure. I, I I just love people coming at Kojima when he's hanging out with, like, a band you've never heard of. Yeah. And people are like, you traitor, and he doesn't care. No, he doesn't care. He's, he's making a game with Xbox now. Like, yeah. He doesn't care. No. He's making money. Yeah. And he just wants more people to play his game, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but again don't play it because it's bad but anyway no. uh, uh lots of movies happening or or maybe not actually happening but uh they're gonna talk about happening um let's start with days gone i guess this one makes no sense speaking of bad games days gone is just trash why would you make a movie out of it yeah i i don't know are they gonna put in that awful dialogue of ride me like you ride your hog whatever the fuck that was oh no <laughs> i hope they add the siphon filter connections because that's like the best part of that game was that a thing yeah so it's there's like hidden things that seem to suggest that it exists in the siphon filter universe oh, wow. and the entire reason the zombies exist is because siphon filter failed <laughs> 
Well, it is, so, uh, you know, the same studio. Sony Bend uh, made yeah. Scythe Filter and made that. I did not so, know that. That's funny. If they keep that in the movie, I'll go see this. But if not, trash. They w- Literal trash. Uh, spoiler, they will not put that in the movie. I bet. Yeah. It, it'll be bad. Uh, well, if that wasn't a weird enough Sony uh, movie, they're doing one on Gravity Rush also. This one... I want. I do too, it's, but it's bizarre. Like that's. It's very strange because, like, I think people like you and I are the only ones that care about Gravity Rush. And, I, yeah, and to, make, to make clear, I've never played Gravity Rush. I just always thought it looked really neat. Yeah, like, I, like it's for crazy people like me who really like that game. Uh, do you expect this to be animated? I kind of do. I hope it is. Yeah. If not, what are we doing? Uh, Ridley Scott's production company is working on it. Okay, so they're. He's he'll at least make something faithful, like his that that Alita movie is actually pretty good. So, yeah. and I'm not a, a Battle Angel Alita fan. So, yeah. well, they uh, they closed down the studio that made Gravity Rush games. That's the weirdest thing. Like, mm. I don't expect there to ever be another Gravity Rush game, uh, and it's just so like. I don't know why 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 Gravity Rush <laughs> from at least from their cool. perspective, it is cool, but it's just I don't know. You know what it is? It's they just saw a bunch of IPs and were like that one. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, fucking uh, like I'm as part of the story here. They have a list of all the Sony shit that is uh, being made right now um, into movies. Half movies of those and won't shows. be made. Yeah, actually, that's the other thing. There's a lot of this stuff, and I kind of suspect Gravity Rush is going to fill out. in. Yeah. This is going to be the last you ever hear about it. It's like that Metal Gear Solid movie. Somehow, that Days Gone movie will come out. Now. Right. I swear to God. It's always the ones that you don't want that come out. So, it, in this story, Engadget here has the, the Uncharted movie happened. Um, Days Gone's happening. There's a Twisted Metal show, a God of War show, a Horizon Zero Dawn show, Gran Turismo show, and a Ghost of Tsushima movie all in the works. Plus, the you know, The Last of Us uh, HBO show. Just crazy over there. Um, Jim Ryan. I don't know, man. <laughs> Jim Ryan's a bad man. He's, he's, a, he's a silly man. Uh, and Sega is also getting into uh, the business. Uh, yeah, but they make good movies. Yeah, I was going to so. say, you know, inspired by uh, Sonic, uh, the success of Sonic. And uh, didn't we talk about they're doing our Streets of Rage one, too? I think so. Yeah. But... Uh, they announced two more uh, uh, with a company called Picture Start who mm. has made mostly, uh, seems like, Sundance indie movies, I guess uh, is the best mm. way to describe it. Um, both of these are unexpected. One, maybe even more so, I guess. All right, let's start with yeah. Space Channel 5. That's weird yeah. enough to me. I think, to me, I think they chose that based on the aesthetic alone. Yeah. Because, like, it's like a sci-fi kind of, like, interesting-looking thing that they can make into a movie. Uh, the other one. Yeah. I'm well, like, hang on. Before we do do that, who who plays Ooh La La? Margot Robbie. I hope. Yeah. I really hope. Yeah, and uh, somebody else made a point that kind of clicked with me about, you know, you you're right about the aesthetic, but also like, what what do kids like to watch now? TikTok dances, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like Space Channel Five was ahead of its time, I guess, in See, that. What they gotta do is they gotta get Greta Gerwig for this one, <laughs> and we'll all love it. Uh, just just a weird thing. But yeah, the next one is even weird, and that's Comic Zone. This one, I like Comic Zone. I like it a lot. I don't know why you made this a movie. I guess just because comic book movies are big. I guess. Sure, but it's not. I don't think people have the reverence for that game. That it's gonna translate. No, no, no. They're not gonna get anybody to like say oh i love that game now i need to go see the movie they they basically need to sell this as a new ip and just kind of for the you know 0.1 percent of the audience who knows like you know maybe have a few winks there but for everybody else it's just like hey this is a deconstruction of comic books and shit yeah um very strange though uh let's see almost done here uh sakurai uh, Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of Smash Brothers and the uh, fucking developer robot who just doesn't stop and will put himself in the hospital for his games. The father of Kirby. Yeah, well, that too. 
Um, he's made a YouTube channel uh, mm-hmm. talking about making games. You know, we had the Kojima podcast, now we got the Sakurai YouTube channel. Um, he's already got quite a bit up there already. Uh, like, I thought he'd yeah. be doing, eh, I'm going to do, you know, one video per week or something like that. But no, he's putting out a lot of shit. Uh, I've seen a lot of people describe it as him kind of like descri- like describing simplistic ideas in games. Yeah. Like, and I think, you know, I, it's it's interesting to hear it from a creator, so. Yeah, it's such a great creator. Um, and a personable mm-hmm. one, too. Now, it's all Japanese, and he's got subtitles. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, if you kind of want any insight into how to make games and just just the creative process about it because it is a lot of like it, it's not technical usually of like well you know this is how you put in this shade or whatever it is just kind of like uh it's a little more philosophy yes um. absolutely uh and he put out one video already that uh was very helpful to me be, uh to i got somebody who doesn't understand or who didn't understand frame rate no matter how many times i explained it to him um and he put out a video explaining to him this and finally this person like oh i get it Uh, whatever uh anyway it's a great channel so far uh so i think everyone should watch it i need to watch a lot more of it i'll check it out uh last thing here because now i'm just getting goofy and stupid um shadow hearts no yeah no that's right shadow hearts and wild arms uh, the creators of those old classic, cult classic games have launched two, or are launching, two Kickstarters. Yes. Uh, which are spiritual successors to both Wild Arms and Shadow Hearts. Uh, I, I can't wait for this. Yeah. Because I love those games. <laughs> I didn't play either one of them. And Wild Arms always looked interesting to me, but I, I really don't know a damn thing about Shadow Hearts. If I'm Shadow Hearts that. is very niche. I wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people. Okay. Uh, Wild Arms, everyone should play Wild Arms. Those games are great. Oh, those, those, excuse me. those are launching on August 29th. So very soon here. So tomorrow. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you're right. Shit. It's, it's uh, um, Armed, let me see. Armed Fantasia to the End of the Wilderness is yeah which one's that one is that the shadow hearts one or the yes that is definitely the shadow hearts one and then the one's called penny yeah blood. penny blood that's the wild arms one uh yeah so two set so this says a okay so there's excuse me <laughs> this, this is complicated how, as far as how these are going to work because they share a mutual funding goal of seven hundred fifty thousand which will put them on both PC, and then there's stretch goals to put them on PlayStation, Xbox, and it says the newest Nintendo hardware at the time, which I guess they're expecting. Oh, interesting. Because, well, I mean, these will be far off, um, of course. And then they have stretch goals that combine both games. I I don't know how that's going to work as far as, like, uh, looking into the... As far as in in the, uh, the Kickstarter... Uh, system and then they, you know they have uh, oh boy these are long <laughs> they got a lot of concept art up for both of these and descriptive stuff for both of these I was going to read some of it but it is all very very long so not going to do that um, but anyway those will launch tomorrow look forward to those yeah if you I will be I will be putting money into those so I will uh, probably not <laughs> Uh, I'll take a look at the uh, the Wild Arms one especially because that that game looks uh, looks interesting to me. Or I'll just uh, put the original Wild Arms on my Steam Deck and play those instead. Uh, anyway, yeah. we're getting to the point in the show where now I'm just kind of babbling. <laughs> <laughs> so that means it's time to say goodbye, right? It, I believe so. Uh, have you uh, done or are doing soon a comedy club? Yes, soon. Uh, Frank and I's schedule is a little out of sync right now. We're trying to get back to a regular schedule. The summer and Frank being a, a stepdad makes things a little difficult. So, yeah. uh, But now we're getting ready to get back into it. Um, go check out my other podcast, The Phantom Zone. We kind of upload whenever we feel like it. So that's always fun. And uh, I don't know. Twitter. Where are you at on Twitter? 
Twitter, uh, Young underscore Kame. All right. Uh, underscore. Uh, check me out. I shit post a lot on there. Say a lot of dumb things. <laughs> uh, the Instagram, Young underscore Kame. And if you find me on Facebook, you can add me, but I won't add you back, probably. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, that's that stuff. Speaking of schedules, though, uh, episode seven, which would normally be in two weeks, uh, I will be in Colorado, so... Uh, that won't be happening. It'll probably be three weeks from now, unfortunately, uh, which mm-hmm. means I guess it'll be jam packed. Um, yeah, and so you can find me on YouTube and Twitch at Freshly Streamed Games, uh, Twitter at BlackheartJV, and also what the hell's the Freshly one? Fre- I think that's just Freshly Games on Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's that stuff. That was Crossover Attack. And we will be back in three weeks, unfortunately. And until then, consider yourselves influenced.